Hey, Stephen Wade. Hey, how you doing, Bob Klein? All right, let's start this video here. here All right. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to uh, finally meet you virtually. <laughs> yeah, really. We'll take what we can get, right? Right, right. <laughs> you still look good. You're, you're a little that. fuzzy. Am I clear? Yeah, you're clear. Oh, good. Well, maybe that's not a good thing. I don't know, because <laughs> too clear is maybe too much. Yeah. <laughs> So how are you doing so far? Uh, okay, okay. I'm uh, yeah. So far, so good. Uh, no COVID, and you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So far, I've been lucky. So far, I've been. I just got the um, booster shot two days ago, so I'm feeling pretty good. You know. Oh, good. Okay. Well, you need a few more days to let it, uh, you know, yeah. do its thing. So yeah, don't uh, don't uh, you know engage in a risky behavior. Right. Right. <laughs> So um, let's start with the interview about what drove you to acting. Okay, uh, uh, I could tell you. Okay. When I was a little kid, mm -hmm. and we'd go to the Chinese restaurant on Sunday night <laughs> with the rest of the Jews, um, <laughs> which is when we all went, and uh, we'd see everybody there, and it was just everyone's looking around, seeing everybody else. And frequently, uh, I'd see my parents looking somewhere, and I'd say, well, who's that, and who's that? And, oh, he's, he's an actor. And that sort of stuck in my head. And, and my father was, uh, was very impressed uh, with a, a classmate of his from school named Gerald mm -hmm. Moore, who would appear in B-movies from time to time on television. Right. And he, oh, there's Jerry. And, uh, and you know, he, he seemed excited to see actors. And somehow it stuck in the back of my head. What is this actor thing? And, you know, everyone seems really impressed. Yeah. <laughs> and, okay, I, I left it there. And then, um, and then when I'd go to see a show, we'd have shows come to the school and they put on plays, you know. Uh, I don't know who those people were, but they seemed professional. What did I know? <laughs> and uh, I always, I just loved that. It, it really excited me, you know? And uh, so I love to go see shows. I love to see actors doing their thing, making like other people. And I enjoyed that whole thing, you know, where after the show, people would go to the stage door and see these people come out. And it, it just seemed sort of a... Uh, what's the word, vaunted uh, profession, yeah. you know? And I thought, gee, that must be cool. So I thought I might like to be one of those people too, you know? And I put that in the back of my head. And, uh, and then I did uh, plays in, in high school. Mm, yeah. You know, I started out doing a secondary part, but it was a comical part. Okay, and yeah. <laughs> I, got, um, I got big laughs, which I loved. Yeah, uh, including the teachers who would normally give me a hard time seemed like my best friend suddenly, you yeah. know, I said, oh, there's something to this. <laughs> and uh, and then the next year, my senior year, I got the lead in the show. And uh, uh, that was a double edged sword because I had a lot of lines to learn and it was a panic situation. Uh, but uh, we got through it and they seemed to like what I did. Um, and I got to kiss the neighbor girl and then somebody else. So that seemed like a cool thing. So <laughs> I, again, I put that in the back of my head. And um, I went to college and I enjoyed, filmmaking seemed like a cool thing to do. And uh, I, uh, I eventually, I didn't pick that major right off the bat. I went to NYU. Oh, wow. And, <laughs> um, and then I ended up majoring in film there. And because it seemed unreasonable to pursue acting because it seemed like such a long shot, I didn't even bother at that point. I said, let's just do filmmaking, you know, it's sort of like it, but not quite, you know. So I did that. And, and who do I get for a teacher? Uh, it, it didn't mean that much to me at the time because he was a young guy himself, but Martin Scorsese was my instructor, mm. you know, and, uh, and I caught the, 
the, the film bug from him and he really got us all excited because he had an excitement you know that was <laughs> that was definitely contagious and i really got into it and i was sort of half-hearted to begin with by the end i was really gung-ho and i wanted to be a filmmaker and uh, i pursued that for a while and actually worked in the business oh, yeah. you know uh <laughs> And I forgot to mention one thing, all the while I was a musician, oh. I played in bands, you know? So that was a, a, a consistent thing running right through from high school on. So I was playing music, doing film, um, and, and acting in my own films from time to time, you know? And I ended up getting an A from Scorsese. <laughs> he gave me an A. And yeah. he actually gave me credit for a project I never even did. So uh, that was a win-win. And um, so Marty was my friend, you know, but it wasn't something I could take advantage of much beyond school. I kept in touch with him for a while, but right. the further he got into his career, the harder he was to stay in touch with because he had more people between him and the outside world, you know, because that's the way it works. Right. The higher people go, the more people there are around them and the, the less ability you have to penetrate this, you know, cadre that yeah. now exists, you know? Yeah. So but anyway. Yeah, uh, the minute you say you had a musician background, that really, really clicked in my head because that explains your incredible range as a voiceover actor because I, the, the voices you give for like Gomamon and Bukamon, it's, it's amazing that you are able to carry that vocal portrayal of that those characters and then keep doing it for as long as you can. Now I, because I know it's like many voiceover actors who have like a strong musician background, like a singer singing background, they right. have very incredible ranges. Right. Well, I worked, I was a drummer and a singer. So I did both. Yeah, I can you see know. it. <laughs> and, um, I did falsetto stuff too, you know, yeah. and high stuff. <laughs> so as as you can as you know from those characters you mentioned, those are really high voices. Very. Uh, they're uh, they're pitched very high, and that is something that I I fell into right from the start when I got into voiceover uh, mm -hmm. in Los Angeles. I started in New York because yeah. I'm from the East Coast. I'm from Connecticut. Yeah, uh, Stanford, right? Right, Stanford. Yes. Okay. With an M. That makes total sense. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I, I I got a job in a Broadway show. Oh, nice. And that was the beginning of my professional career. Um, you know, and I, I was playing in a band. In fact, uh, it was so strange the way I found out about it. I, uh, I had gotten this audition for Annie. Uh, mm -hmm. That's the show I did, Annie. Oh, yeah. And... Um, I wasn't even that big a fan of musicals, you know? Yeah. <laughs> but uh, but I, I was taking an acting workshop and Martin Sharnan, who was the director and the lyricist from Annie, came that night as a guest uh, instructor. And right. I was doing a scene. And from that, I, I got an audition for Annie. Nice. You know? And um, I mean, he hated the scene we did, but I guess <laughs> I looked right for the part. So right. he had me audition. And I, I came back a, a couple of days later, and that's a whole story, which I won't go into now, but because that's long and crazy. Yeah. But I auditioned for Annie, and the next day, I auditioned on a Friday, Saturday, back in Connecticut, I'm having lunch with a girlfriend of mine. And uh, so we go to IHOP, International House of Pancakes, on the yeah. Post Road in Greenwich, and... Um, I'm telling her about my audition from the day before and, and who should walk into that restaurant as if on cue, but the casting director from that show. Wow. Who, who I met the day before after I auditioned. Small world. You know, <laughs> and said something in name to, uh, you know, cause he followed me out of the room with a clipboard with names on it and took my phone number and so forth. So I said, that's encouraging, you know, and I, I said, well, are you going to call us even if we didn't get it? And he said, I, I didn't, I, I was just trying to think of something to say to him, to, to talk to him, to make contact with him. Because I, I got the, an actual casting director right there in front of me. Yeah. And, and I, so I said something really stupid, like, will you call us if, 
if we don't get it. And he said, no, no, if you don't get it, we won't call you. So, but anyway, the next day I see him in the restaurant and, and I'm talking to the, the girl, the woman, and she says, well, you're going to go up and talk to Peter Sergetti? It was, that's the name of the guy. And I said, you better believe I am. So I get up and I walk over to talk to him. Uh, I tried a couple of times because the waitress had come. And it was, it was a comedic scene in its own right. And finally, I went up there. And I'm standing over, over him and his wife. And I, I say, uh, I've been waiting to, to come up to talk to you. And I figured this was an opportune time what are you doing here in Connecticut? And he said, what are you doing here? And I'm trying to make awkward conversation again with him. Yeah. And he says, let me, let me just uh, butt in here. I said, I'm not supposed to say this, but mm -hmm. you, you got the part. So he told me in the restaurant that I got a job in a Broadway show. Yeah. So I walked back to the table and she goes, Ooh, what did he say? What did he say? He said, I got a job in a Broadway show. That's a good feeling. <laughs> oh, yeah, there's nothing like that feeling, especially when you're non-equity. Yeah. And you don't even have your card yet. And, and it's going to change your life completely, which yeah. it did. It did. And I, I, I did that part for three years. I did it over, over a thousand times, like 1,200 yeah. times. You know, so uh, it was it was it was insane. It was just an insane experience, and uh, it was great. And I made a, I made incredible friends that I have to this day that I wouldn't have made otherwise. I wouldn't have been in this business today if it weren't for that turn of events. You know, one turn yeah. can just shoot you off in a whole different road. I can so keep that, that dream alive because you never know when it's going to happen. Right. You know. Thank you for sharing that story because it's the first time I heard that story from you because I remember um, my friend Chris, he interviewed you um, about a month ago. Yes. Yes. He's, yeah, I just got recently acquainted with him. He's a very, very decent person. Oh, yeah. Nice guy. He's very, and he's very great with doing his research when it comes to you actors because it's amazing. <laughs> yeah. That was that was an incredible thing, and uh, you know, I, I I talked to one of my friends from that show last night. You know, yeah. these are great friends that I have to this day. You know, and and everything led to everything else, and then I got in commercials, mm -hmm. and I got agents in commercials, and I got voiceover auditions in New York, and did voiceovers in New York. Oh, wow. You know, and then I figured I'm gonna have to make a move to L.A. <laughs> yeah. You know? because before I get too old, because time was <laughs> passing. Yeah, if, no joke. And uh, so uh, I happened to see a show on Theater Row, which is 42nd Street, where they have all these uh, off-Broadway mm -hmm. theaters, you know, right near Manhattan Plaza there. Right. The Actors Towers. Yeah. <laughs> and um, I saw this show. It was, it was, a, it was a Jewish show about uh, people living you know, in the, in, in uh, the old country and, oh, and, and doing old country stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you know better than me. <laughs> I can't even think of the name of the show. It, it, it slips my mind, but it was really, it was really interesting. And, uh, and it so happened that, uh, that I saw the guy from the show at my gym, you know, several weeks later. And I said, fantastic job, man. Uh, you know, you do you do a wonderful thing. I'm thinking of going to L.A. myself and and doing you know voiceover. I want to do. I'd like to do cartoons. Quite frankly, I've always wanted to do that. And he said, "Well, you know, the director of our show was Gordon Hunt, and Gordon Hunt was from L.A. and uh, you know, Helen Hunt's father. You know, Helen Hunt. She was the yeah. one from uh, uh, the show with Paul Reiser, uh, Mad About You. Yeah, and." Um, but anyway, he was a teacher who he taught classes in LA and he worked at Hanna-Barbera, you know, oh. or he had worked at Hanna-Barbera. And he said, oh, wow. this is a connection I got to make. Yeah, so right. I said, <laughs> you know what? I, but I, I, had, I had him to see and a friend of mine, Alan Kirschenbaum, who was unfortunately no longer with us, yeah. but uh, he, he was a guy I met in the Groundlings class in, in uh, in New York, and he went out to L.A. and became a, a writer, 
and uh, he was my friend and he admired me. You know, he was one of my, my supporters and he was out here working. So I said, I got Alan and I got, I'm going to see this guy, Gordon Hunt. I'm going to LA. So I made the move. I had a friend who lived here. I could stay with him temporarily. I did until they, they hated me and wanted to kick me out and they did. <laughs> no, we were still friends, but uh, you know, it was, it was dicey. I overstayed my welcome. But anyway, uh, I was there for a month. But anyway, uh, so uh, Gordon Hunt, I ended up studying with, and he helped me put together my first demo. You see how that works? Yeah. <laughs> so uh, that was uh, that was a great thing. You know, he was a good teacher, very light hand. You know, sometimes I felt like he wasn't really doing anything, but he really did help me. You know, and um, and then Alan put me on a uh, on a sitcom at, at one point there. So I had a week on a sitcom, which he became the, the runner of, which was yeah. a, a show called uh, Coach? Uh, Down the Shore, okay. which was an early Fox show, oh, okay. which was very much like Friends, because okay. he had three women and three guys sharing <laughs> houses and doing you know that, that kind of thing. Yeah. And uh, it was very much like Friends, and uh, but they all were down the shore uh, in New Jersey. And mm -hmm. I played a, a fun character on that. And so I had my first television credit and I had Gordon Hunt as my teacher and he helped me put my demo together. And I, and I, he told me to study with Chris Zimmerman, who was also, who was working at Hanna-Barbera yeah. and Charlie Adler, who uh, was this crazy voiceover actor who was yeah. very talented. Mm -hmm. And so I, you know how you put all the pieces together and that's how, how I did. That's how I put the pieces together, little things. So I figured if I keep on building these blocks, I would start to have something that, that resembled a career. Yeah, building And them that's what I did, career. you know? And um, that's how it happened. Yeah, it's amazing that you mentioned Chris Zimmerman because all I know, I, I can say she's an amazing direct director. Um, yeah. Charlie Adler too. They're also great teachers too because I know Charlie Adler's still teaching the next generation yep. of actors doing voiceovers too. And speaking yeah. And speaking of you doing on camera work, did you work? Did you have like a guest minor role in the show called Coach? It kind of yes, I did. Yes, I did. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I was on Coach a couple of times. Yeah. Um, I, I've done a smattering of uh, you know. I started taking those uh, those workshops, you know, casting director workshops. Yep. And uh, uh, I know they've been. Uh, there was some guy who really discredited that whole thing and created a big stink and everything and it oh. really blew that whole thing wide open and, and kind of killed it, quite frankly. I won't mention his name and go into it. Right. It's, that's a whole other episode. But, <laughs> but the point was, I took those workshops and I became sort of a, a, a key student type guy there where you got to do it for free, which is a good thing to do it even do that. Yeah. And, you know, so you go and you run the workshops and then they give you credit for it and you could take them on your own too. And the, the point was, it was a good way to work out in front of these casting directors and, and get feedback. If nothing else, even if they don't hire you or bring in for an audition or anything, you know, you're still working out. You're still picking up sides and learning how to, how to read, you know, Only and, and getting a critique, critique yeah. you know. And uh, so I did that too. And, and I, I ended up getting a number of shows because of that. Um, yeah. So another thing that I did along the way, I haven't done it for years because they're not the same, those workshops these days. They, they imposed all sorts of rules on that whole process and, and uh, made it really difficult to do. Oh, man. So. Yeah. I mean, like as I hear many stories telling their their humble beginnings of getting into a professional acting career, they always share very similar stories along with getting into the business. One thing you, you first got to do was owning your craft as an actor. Yes, which I did in New York. Yeah, and, no, def, yeah. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. Yeah, and I studied here too. Oh, I had I had some coaches. Um, Marky Costello, Costello, who was 
somehow related to Lou Costello from Abbott and Costello. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Was was a teacher, was a casting director and kind of a real character. Yeah. Kind of a high end <laughs> character, you know. But I, I knew there was something uh, worthwhile there. And I took her, uh, had her, I went to her and actually studied with, with her. And, and she really helped me uh, and got to the point where she said, uh, okay, just go and audition now. You know, you're, you're okay. Yeah. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> and uh, and it, it was worthwhile doing. So also, I've studied with a lot of different people along the way. Right. Just acting, you know, basic acting stuff. Yeah. What basically what got you into with the with your fellow actors around Saban Entertainment era? Like, OK, that's an interesting thing. That's a step that I did not get into yet, but it's coming. Okay. Uh, um, <laughs> connection in my class. There was a, a nice guy uh, named Sten, who I became friendly with. And um uh, he was, a, he used to play in a band with a guy named Jamie Simone. Jamie was oh, his drummer. Yeah. And, uh, and Sten was a singer. And they were old friends. And, and, and one night, Chris Zimmerman came in. I didn't even know her. Wait, I, did, I was studying with her already. Yes. But she came in and uh, she conducted a class uh, of one of Gordon Hunt's classes when he was out one night because actually uh, Chris was initially hired by Gordon Hunt mm -hmm. as I recall when she started her career you know she was mm -hmm. his secretary believe <laughs> it or not or his assistant or something yeah and uh, so Chris came in and for the night we did exercises in doing reading for you know cartoons and she handed out sides and did all that stuff and we all mm -hmm. read and Stan said, holy moly, you, you're really, you know, because I was ahead of other people because I was already doing it. And I, whatever talent I had, you know, somehow. <laughs> right. <Yeah. laughs> it was revealed. And, uh, and Stan said, wow, man, you ought to meet my friend, Jamie. Jamie works at this place, Saban. You ever hear Saban? I said, Saban. I said, I hadn't even heard of that, you know, because that was totally out of my sphere. Right. You know. right. <laughs> so he said, you should meet Jamie. So he actually took me to a party one night. Uh, and uh, there I met Jamie. And Haim Saban was there too. Haim Saban and Shuki Levy, who was his associate, was there as well. And, you know, I was introduced to them. So, but, but they didn't remember me from that because they, yeah. they met a bunch of people, but, but Jamie did. And I, and I said, uh, and we, we got to the point where he said, send me your demo and got to that step, you know? So I sent him my demo and he said, that's, and I got, uh, he, he gave me a part from that in, in a, in a thing. Uh, Oliver Twist, I think. Yeah, it was Oliver Twist. Mm. Uh, and I played some little, crazy guy and uh it was it was it was original animation mm -hmm. it wasn't anime right you know uh, so uh it was we all sat there in a circle and read our parts you know with a microphone and did the whole thing like it was one of those sessions mm -hmm. you know it was my first one and uh come to think of it, i wasn't so great but they used what i did so it yeah. wasn't terrible and uh so that was my first job. Yeah. You know, my first voice job in LA that I got from Jamie. And he was working at working for Savan then. He was he he went from being an engineer to a director. Mm. And that's how his thing sort of happened. Oh yeah, we know how it yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh and then from there he introduced me to Rita whose name was Acosta. Acosta then. Magica, yeah. Yeah, now, there you go. And, uh, <laughs> and she, the was doing, she was doing the anime. Mm -hmm. And I got my first anime part because of her. Mm. And she cast me. Uh, uh, she said, can you do high voices? <laughs> and I, I did the high voice, you know, and I got a part in a show called Honey Bee Hutch. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Honey Bee Hutch was my first anime part. 
and um, I uh, I played a part a, a character named Chip. Yeah, a, little, a cute little bug. Yeah, <laughs> you know, and uh, and that was the beginning. And then from that, I got an audition uh, in Eagle Riders, mm -hmm. and I got Eagle Riders. Yeah, which was really crazy because I I had I could do basic basic dubbing mm. at the time and i don't think we even had code well we did have codes we did have we did have have the uh have the beeps then at saban yeah but what i did get uh I, that my first session was with the fawn brothers tom fawn and, and jonathan, jonathan fawn. john fawn. yeah right uh, great guys yeah They're hilarious guys <laughs> yeah. except except they they were carrying on like lunatics doing routines <laughs> because they're brothers and they do yeah. that <laughs> and what what made the connection between you and the Fawn brothers is that y'all all from new york and y'all and y'all jewish too yeah well they're half jews okay <laughs> and half italian on the mother's side yeah i can see it <laughs> yeah so, uh, but we had the Jewish thing, and it's very strong in their family. Their father mm -hmm. was a very strong influence and a character in his own right who got them going with their <laughs> whole thing. So we were doing shtick in the microphone because we had the headphones on, you know, and it's funny because you can hear yourself, you know, and uh, I was doing my, uh, my Paul Williams impression, which they were very impressed with, you know, day after day. I will be alone. I'm not that strong, you know. And and that that they loved that. And uh, and then they would do their nuts thing. And you know, you have the four, you have the count where you have to come in on four. We were just doing Walla in this session, by the way. Mm -hmm. Walla and Honey Bee Hutch. Yeah. Because it's my very first job. And and they would carry on right until the fourth beep, you know. And I we'd have to come in. And Dave Mallow was this guy. He was the he was a director, and we were driving him crazy. And <laughs> yeah. I, I and I was I was new, so I didn't want to cause any problems. But right. these guys are are you know like uh, like <laughs> animaniacs. <Yeah. laughs> they were really like that. And um, but we had a lot of fun. We got the job done. And uh, what I, I got out of that. He, Evening was um, an introduction to Kevin Seymour. Mm -hmm. uh, Kevin Seymour uh, had Animes, which was uh, yeah. uh, his company that, that operated uh, out of this place in the valley called Magnitude 8, uh, okay. which was a studio. Yeah. And um, it was a great place because they had great snacks there <laughs> and, and they had pinball and all sorts of other things to play when, when you take That's breaks. <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah. <clears throat> and um, they said, oh, you, you got to go up there. It's great. <clears throat> so I called Kevin and I spoke to him and he said, and I sent him my tape. And uh, he called me back very soon and he gave me a part hmm. um, because I had a Tarzan yell on my opening my my tape, you know, <laughs> And uh, because of that Tarzan yell, he said, you're right for this character. And the show was, uh, was um, I played Jinai. Jinai, in the, it was the Wanderers. Oh, uh, El Hazard. Okay. El Hazard, which is a really cool show. And yeah. uh, I played the villain of that show, Jinai, a high school student. Who, uh, who, who was always in cahoots with the bad guys through the whole thing. Yeah. You know, and uh, he, he had this laugh, this <laughs> kind of thing, you know. So now. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it would just trail off with Echo. And um, that I got that because of the Tarzan thing. Yeah. And he figured if I could do Tarzan, I could do that. It's something crazy like that. Right. <laughs> and I did. And so that was, uh, that was my animes thing. And um, we had no, we had no beeps there. We had no beeps. Ooh. We had to go by time code. We had to count yeah. backwards, you know, cause it was pretty primitive. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> but you know, after you do it a, 
bit, you, you get the hang of it. And I did, you know. And so I was doing that and I was doing Eagle Riders playing the villain there. I got a lot of villains too. Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Malinox. The villains too. <laughs> Malinox. We changed. We changed the name of uh, of that character about five times before we got to Malinox, which reminds me of Malox. Mm-hmm. But uh, you know, Malox and some sort of Malathion or something, which is, which is a a poison. Uh, but anyway, uh, Malinox um, was was the villain of Eagle Riders, which is also the villain. In uh, Eagle Riders was was an adaptation of uh, 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 starts with a G. Uh, uh, Gatchaman. There we go. Yeah, Gatchaman. Which I ended up doing too, and playing the yeah. same character, but not he wasn't called Malinox in this one when I did Gatchaman. Yeah, um, but he was just sort of you know evil kind of yeah, guy. <laughs> sort of a little effeminate. And and uh, and Malinox was yes, Eagle Riders. He had this sort of thing, like almost like the Great Gildersleeve. But he uh, he he flipped. His voice would flip. Yes, <laughs> you know he didn't laugh like that. <laughs> yeah. You know he was supposed to be. Is he a man? Is he a woman? What is he? <laughs> you know because he had flowing hair and he wore a mask and he was sort of uh, kind of effeminate too. Right. And, so, so that's how it started to get rolling, and that. So then I was doing anime, you know, anime. Right. But one and it all started from that. Yeah, actually, the first time I heard your voice was actually on a season of Power Rangers where you play a little creature called Seymour. Yeah, uh, that was the tiniest little part. Yeah, yes. <laughs> it was a one episode thing, and it kind yeah. of similar to Gomamon voice, but but specifically unique. Right. And the thing is, once I did that Honey Bee Hutch thing with the with the high voice, the, yeah. you know, this this kind of placement, small sounding, um, I I just did that character with different variations and and auditioned for a bunch of different parts uh, using that voice, and that was sort of my stock and trade. And it wasn't until uh, until. Uh, Steve Prince came along, Steve Derek Prince. Yeah, Derek Prince. And uh, who, who also did that. Yeah, oh yeah, he's good at it too. Thing, <laughs> you know? And, and uh, Joshua Seth had a, had a naturally high voice. He yeah. played, he played Hutch in Honey Bee mm-hmm. Hutch. Yes, he did. And uh, he also was in, uh, uh, he was in Digimon too. Yeah, Digimon, he, he played, played Gabumon. Uh, Ga- uh, what the, the not Gabumon, the the uh, the main uh, Multimon. Yeah, Multimon. Yeah, but yeah, I forget. I I can't keep track of all of them. But yeah, uh, yeah, we could, sorry, I can't, I can't track no. of all your uh, Digimon work. <laughs> Which, right. Well, and that's how I got Gomamon. Yeah, can you explain that whole auditioning process? Because Gomamon started up started off as Bukamon, and then suddenly he did you right. Right. Well, Pukamon, a Bukamon with a B is uh, it's just uh, it's just Gomamon even but even higher, even right. more squeezed. You yeah. know, so I had to hurt myself to do that. <laughs> but they, when I auditioned, though, I think I auditioned as Gomamon. Mm-hmm. They gave us a sheet that said Gomamon. Right. You know. So I just, you know, Joe, this this thing right here, and and I got it, you know. <laughs> and but I had already done <coughs> other things, yeah, uh, that were high, high as, of course, as you know. But I, I actually did a whole series um, uh, called Bit the what? Cupid, okay, which never saw the light of day, oh. as far as I know. But I did the whole series. Yeah. But I, I know the one series that I know you did, but was, you also did it with another Bob by the name of Bob Pappenbrook. Yes. And yes. Well, the said that's, that show is you at your best because it's your first lead role. It's called Flint the Time Detective. Flint the Time Detective. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Finally got a lead um, after the other thing failed because I was bit the Cupid. And yeah. then I actually started out with that that iris thing coming out just like the all the looney tunes and everything i said man i'm in a show with it has that thing 
And, uh, but then nobody saw it. So it's too bad because it was kind of a cool show. But, but after that, mm -hmm. audition for, uh, for Flint the Time Detective. And another high thing, yeah. uh, really, you know, squeezed. Yeah. <laughs> which was a cool show, I thought. Yeah. I grew up without, I liked it as a kid. It, it's a nice show. <laughs> it's very yeah. I mean, it's kind of interesting. And the, some of the characters are funny. Yeah. Like that Petra. You know, yeah, evil, Petra from And she's kind of <laughs> hot, too. <laughs> you know? Bob Pepperbrook as um, your dad, he was... As, as Rocky, my Rocky, dad. Was, he's a he very handy Nothing character. more than a slab of rock. <laughs> <laughs> yeah bob yeah bob pepperbrook is a very great actor i love when he played those hammy kind of characters because he, it, if you get him started he'll keep going and going and going <laughs> and i know you guys uh made michael swords laugh so many times during your sessions too <laughs> oh <laughs> gosh michael sarge was so much fun to work with because you know he because he was, he was a loon too. He was kind of crazy. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> just fun. And we did most of those at, uh, at a place called Fidelity. I don't think it's still called Fidelity. It's on Whitset, Whitset just above Moore Park. Or just, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, not, no, actually we're below toward the, toward the freeway. Yeah. And not Ventura. Uh, but Fidelity Studio, which had a driveway where we almost got killed every night coming out. Because okay. uh, it was coming out of this blind driveway, you know, onto which set. But anyway, that's uh, besides the point. We made it, obviously. We're here. <laughs> yeah, speaking of which, before you booked your role as Flint, did Michael direct you on Digimon for a little bit, along with Wendy Lee? Yes, yes. Uh, actually, we I <laughs> everybody directed. Uh, <laughs> Wendy did. Um, and I'm Saban's stepdaughter, directed too. Uh, Tiffany Kirsten? Tiffany. Yeah, there we go. Yes, Tiffany. Kirsten or? Kirsten or something like that. Yeah, or... Kirsten, yeah. Or Kirsten, I'm trying to pronounce it right too. <laughs> yeah, it was a long time ago. So right. <laughs> got to cut us some slack, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, she was very nice. And uh, yeah, so they threw everybody in there. Wow. Even Richard Epcard directed some Digimon, too. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. And, uh, and well, Bridget Hoffman did not. Yeah. I wish she directed some other things. Yeah, I think she directed some other projects under uh, Kevin Seymour's uh, studio. At yes. Sec yes, yeah. but she also did some Saban stuff. Okay. Yeah, I can see that. As I recall. Okay. <laughs> kind of a blur. You know, there were a number of characters that I did that I don't even know what they were. You know, I was just yeah. sent to a studio and told that, you know, we're, we're doing that thing and do it sort of like that. And, uh, yeah. and I did. You know, they let you see the character and um, hear the Japanese. Mm -hmm. And then you do something that sort of fits. Yeah. So that happened here and there. Right. But with Digimon, it gave y'all more of a unique cre creative process too, even though you got to fit into the um, dub and flap and the timing too, with, you know. Oh, yeah. I mean, you got, I mean, you and the rest of the actors that are involved with Digimon, y'all had a blast doing all these celebrity impersonations with your characters. Uh, Jeff Nimoy, I saw him did a Vito Corleone impression as one of the Digimon yeah. characters. Yeah, that's pretty crazy. <laughs> yeah. I actually did some Tentamon myself when he yes, was you, yes, you did because that's around the time when Jeff and Bob left the show at the end of season two, and then yeah, there was some political thing. Uh, ah. The guy uh, he got ticked off at him or something, and he had and yeah, so, uh, something political yeah. happened. And, yeah, they, uh, but that wasn't my business. Right when they called me and said, "Would you play Tentamon?" I I spoke to Jeff, and he didn't care. So, yeah, he was like, like, Bob is okay. <laughs> yeah, fine. so, ooh, Tentamon, ooh. Yeah, so I just imitated Jeff and uh, great. it was, okay. It was, it was a great, it was a great vocal match. And you also vo voiced um, Tentamon and Mega Kabuterimon and Tyrant Kabuterimon in a Digimon video game produced at Bang Zoom with Mary. Right, Martin. right. But that yes. was a couple years back. <laughs> I did that. I did it at, I did it at Bang Zoom as well. 
Wow. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I had to say, because when you did Tyrant Kabuteri, I could tell it was you because it sounded a lot like your Ikakuman voice. Oh, Mega Kabuteri, man. <laughs> yeah, Ikakuman. All right, now all you have to do is hurt your throat when you do this and you'll be fine. <laughs> Yeah. So, so Mary, you oh, you and you had me down there at Zudamon. I did not do Zudamon. Uh, Michael no. Sarich did Zudamon. Yes, you did in Data Squad. You did do Zudamon, but all your cues were like Vulcan's hammer, like a couple of times and then a couple of grunts. And that's, that's right. Yes. Yeah, I, they just had me. Yeah, you're right. I, I did it because it was such a small thing. <laughs> yeah, it was mine. that and you know, get, it, they'd get it done. Yeah. They didn't want to call Michael for that. Yeah, and then you also did like a group of Goemon playing around. It, that was a nice scene because, you know, it was a very nice scene, like a couple of Goemon playing around and whatnot. Yeah, <laughs> it's nice to see a whole bunch of those Goemon. They're very colorful <laughs> and cute. Yeah. And then speaking of like with um, Digimon, you also, another v Digimon video game you did, you, you voiced Vmon. And I think Bob Buckles directed you in that video game. You did Gomamon, Ikakumon, and then Vmon for a little bit because your v you were trying to do a, what, Derek Stephen Prince did and try to vocal match him. All I hear was you saying V knockout, V punch or something. <laughs> yeah. It, it was fun. I mean, I mean, I love playing Goemon as a fighter on that video game too. So <laughs> oh really? Ah, okay. <laughs> yeah, you collab. have a nice I, I really enjoyed your uh your little uh collage <laughs> of, of things there. And uh, some of them I didn't recognize, but what the heck? Um uh, <laughs> And and you but you didn't get El Hazard. El, but yeah, El Hazard yeah, I really try to get cool. as many as I can. <laughs> yeah, you could probably find that somewhere. Yeah, yeah, I can. I can definitely. Research. I mean, to see it, just to see what it, yeah. what it was, because it's kind of a fun show. Michael Sarge is funny too in that show. Yeah, and I, um, drunk teacher. I know back on Digimon, you are one of the few actors to have a vo voiceover role in every single Digimon season, along with Kirk Thornton, Michael Sarge, and Richard Epcar. Only yeah, in. that's something. I never yeah. thought of it, but you're right. You're right. It's amazing. I think, and you played a dad character in season two, Sora's dad. I think that was just you sounding like yourself, you know. Yeah. The and as a, I did a teacher, too. Yeah, you did a teacher in the next season with Mary directing. Yes, with yeah. Mary Elizabeth. Yep. Mary Elizabeth McGlynn, who is yeah. now in Hawaii. Yeah, you yeah, you work with when it comes to your Digimon work, most of the directors you work with is Jeff Nimoy, Mary Elizabeth McGlynn, and think Michael Serge too, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um I'm just thinking I did uh, for, uh, for Studiopolis. Yeah. Uh Blue Dragon. Blue Dr yeah. A blue Dr oh man. Uh Motto Motto. Yeah. Played. A little, a little Randy character. Mm -hmm. huh. <laughs> yeah. yeah and speaking and of, they cut a lot of stuff out of that show because <laughs> it got really, you know, some of these like my character was girl crazy, <laughs> yeah. and I was always leering at women and doing stuff, and you'd have no idea to see that show. But yeah. if you go look at the Japanese, he's always chasing some skirt. Or trying to look under something, or yeah, look up uh, something. Uh, speaking of uh, what you said, uh, share with Chris saying that the Japanese people are horny people, as you say, because yes, talk, absolutely, yeah, because it's very they're very risque when it comes to that kind of jokes or any kind of callback to like certain people are kind of like you know horny and very unadded. Yeah, you wonder what the heck's going on with those yeah. people. What's happening in their culture? Yeah, yeah, it's like a whole different culture where, you know, in the US, we kind of frown upon, we definitely frown upon that kind of behavior. <laughs> yeah, they, they're making cartoons that kids are watching and they're all, yeah, even <laughs> Gomamon had stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I, there was one scene where he's, it's in a bathhouse. And he's oh, yeah, in a yeah, bath I know what you're talking about. And they cut stuff out of that. Yeah. Yeah, um, I remember Goemon was just swimming around in the lady's side. <laughs> yes, he swam <laughs> over the lady's side. <laughs> You're right. And then pa Palmon, played by Anna Garduno, she's like, get back to the boy's side. And then, yeah. There you go. Wow. Wow. That, that, that was very fun. That was... <laughs> 
And speaking of still on Gomamon, so when Digimon finally came back with these movies, how did they reach out to you from Studioopolis? Because I know you recorded the movies at Studioopolis during that time period. So how did they? Well, I, I had been doing things for Studioopolis on right. a long basis. Right. And of course, I still had my connection with Jamie because he was my very first employer. Yeah, and he's the owner uh, of the studio too. Right. And, uh, I, you know, I had been in and out of that place many times. Yeah. Mary Elizabeth worked there a lot. Yeah. And uh, so when these things turned up, they would call me. Okay. They would just call, you know, and say, we got this thing. And, uh, and then Bang Zoom got in touch with me when they were doing that thing. Yeah. You know, and uh, that's pretty much how it worked. Email yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and telephone. Like, hey, Bob, you want to come back as Gomamon and Kakumon? Like, yeah, sure. <laughs> Why not? I mean, I could do, still do the voice. Yeah. So let's do it. You know? Yeah. It's, it's, the thing is, with your range as Ikakumon, I had to, to, to give a clap to you because how you maintain that voice throughout the time you have to voice the character. Like, there's many times where you have to, you know, yell and scream anytime if you get hurt really bad or whatnot, especially when Ikakumon got infected in one movie. Yeah, you, yeah, you performed very well with those scenes. At- Thank you very much. Yeah, well, that's that's the thing about uh, about doing, you know, the voice stuff is you have to find the voice and then be able to you find it in different situations. Right. You know, sometimes they're crying, sometimes they're laughing, sometimes they're screaming. You know, and what do you do with the voice? How does it go? So you have to work that out. Yeah. You know, and it's it's basically finding it, it that comes to the acting, finding the character and and doing it as a character. Yeah. You know, not just a voice. Right. <laughs> and that's what people have to come to understand if they want to do this. Yeah. Because I hear so many stories of people say, I want to do voice actors. I want to do voice acting and have a great voice. but can And you- I could do a lot of voices. Right. But can you act within that voice? Right. Like, that's the key to it. Like you got to act or perform between those voices that you can do. Can uh, like, you maintain that voice? Yeah. Very- and not have to take a cough break. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Ikagumon comes close to me because you are really hitting that, uh, you know. <laughs> well, I learned how to do that sort of uh, the roar thing where, you, you know, where you sort of hang in there and, and yeah. do that. Because you do it really well. You never, I never, throughout the, all the episodes featuring Ikakuma along with the recent movies, you never miss a beat. You always, you're definitely having fun performing as Ikakuma. You're playing like some kind of lion furry bear or some kind of creature yeah some kind of thing with one horn in his head yeah it's like harpoon torpedo and that's <laughs> harpoon torpedo yeah <laughs> you gotta work out those your your yell yeah and the fact that you actually play ikakuman in the video game i hear you harpoon torpedo horn attack and icicle crash or something <laughs> yeah it's, it's a video game so you know you're doing all sorts of things that you normally want to do on the show so you know right right i'm right. just glad you had fun with the roles you did on digimon and thank well, you well i did you know it's, it's a group of actors that sort of uh, rose up doing this thing yeah uh, in la yeah because uh you know anime came over you know, and it sort of started back i don't know uh, even in the 50s, I guess, yeah. been in sort of a in, in a very uh, embryonic way, right. you know, and then it grew with with Speed Racer, mm-hmm. you know, and started with that, and yeah. uh, and then it it started happening, I guess, in the in the 80s for real. Yeah, like Robotech and whatnot. With Robotech was the big turn. Yeah, and um, Carl I- Masek was yeah. one of the first guys to sort of put it on the map here mm-hmm. you know and it's then good. saban wanted to get into it and speaking of the earlier anime days you was in this series called fist of the north star yes was that done at kevin seymour studio or a completely different studio i think it was done it might have been done there but i think okay. i did it someplace else come to think of it okay Got i it. remember i think 
it might have been Bridget Hoffman or or Wendy. Yeah. I do remember some sessions where I went to different studios. Okay. And it, it was connected to Kevin, I think. But it's hard to keep track. Yeah, because so, even though you may see the same people, it's, it's kind of similar with the Digimon roles you did because it was at Fox Studios, then some other studio, then Studioopolis, then Bang Zoom, and then back to Studioopolis. Right, a place called The Hook. Okay. Uh, there are several uh, Saban studios. Uh, there's the Annex, and then there's another one. Westwood? Ventura. What's that? Westwood? Westwood, well, that's where it was initially. Okay. Well, actually, no, it was not there initially. It was in Burbank okay. on Pass Avenue. That's where Saban was when I first worked there. Okay. And, and, uh, and then they moved to Westwood and had a, a good part of a building there where it said Saban on the, on the roof. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, it was like a big, impressive sign. Right there, you could see it from the freeway uh, yeah. at, at Wilshire, on Wilshire. Yeah. In Westwood. And then, uh, and then that was the end of Saban. Then they, uh, you know, it was really kind of a bummer. Right. Yeah. It was good while it lasted. We really yeah. enjoyed going there and doing that. And you but, might... you know, things change and yeah. time, time marches on. But no, it's just that, it's just that what I, I meant to say before was the whole anime thing sort of happened about the time just before I got to LA and it was, was really sort of growing uh, in a big way when I got here. And the people that all worked together got to know one another and we sort of became the core, the anime core. Yeah, oh man, <laughs> you guys did. I mean, I think you first met, did you met Jeff Nimoy before Digimon or during Digimon? Uh, I think I met him before. Okay. Because uh, we all did uh, a bunch of those other shows. There yeah. were like pizza, what something about, what, the pizza cats or something? Some some kind of there were a lot of shows that I, yeah. I can't even remember that I did. Yeah. Something about a cat yes. or something about P I don't know. The, the craziest titles, you know. Yeah, because he's another person that I know you're close friends with too, because y'all both got similar backgrounds. He went to NYU, he's Jewish, he's from New York. Right. It's it's amazing that all you guys have very similar connection with you with the Fawn family. Jeff, he's out, he's Jewish too. Yes. It's Us shoes stick together for crying out loud. <laughs> I'll tell you. And that brings me that brings me to a next gig that you did that I know not many know about that you had a role as Moe Falker from the f comedy film Meet the Falkers. Yes I did. Yes I did. Uh that Meet the Falkers. <laughs> a Mo Falker. Yeah. <laughs> obviously it was a joke name yeah. and we all had joke names and yeah stuff. and uh <laughs> yeah. there was uh, anita fokker and uh <laughs> and dom fokker uh, and we were all in this scene together and uh they ended up cutting it out yeah unfortunately yeah i read about that <laughs> but it was great it was great and it's actually on the uh extended on, edition? on the on the on the uh, disc yeah you get the disc mm -hmm. it's under extra scenes yeah i was looking through it i'm like is that r martin klein yeah that yes, is, it is. <laughs> that's me and uh i played mo fokker <laughs> and which was great because I got to work with Robert De Niro. Yeah, uh, Dustin Hoffman, Barbara Streisand. Oh, it was great. Was I met good. Dustin Hoffman that day, got pictures with him. Um, yeah. And what's her face? Uh, Gwyneth Paltrow's mother. Uh, oh, 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 Blythe Danner. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, that's her she name. She was in that scene too. Yeah. And basically we're coming up and meeting the family of the, uh, of the bride. And so we're shaking, uh, shaking hands and saying, introducing <laughs> ourselves, you know, we're yeah. Mo and Bunny Fokker. <laughs> you know, my wife was funny. I'm Mo. And, you know, it was very, this kind of thing, <laughs> you know. And because of this, because of this, I got hired. Yeah. You know? And what the heck? 
a lovely day. It was a great day working on that movie. Yeah, I I want to be surprised that all the um actors involved, cast as a as members of the Falker family, were all Jewish too, because I know um Dustin and Barbara are definitely Jewish. Uh, ben Stiller is Jewish. I just like that little that close connection with you guys when it comes to your your Jewish heritage. You know, it's come together in this one comedy. <laughs> well, we find it amusing too. Yeah. That's the whole thing. We find the whole thing very amusing. So we enjoy doing Jewish stick together. Yeah. <laughs> so we know when we get together, we can yeah. go, so how are you doing? You know, and yeah. and talk and have a wonderful time. Yeah. And uh so gave him the fag and cloud and sets and fagin, you know, we'll even do some double talk Yiddish. Yeah. Why not? Right? Very, very, very strong background, especially with because it's it's it makes us laugh. It tickles us. Yeah, it, it, <laughs> man. Oh man, you. And then I want to uh, before we wrap this up, I want to mention that I remember like a long time ago, Mary called you in for a session for the show Naruto. Do you remember doing the session? Yes, I don't. I don't remember the session specifically. Okay, but I know I did. I didn't work much on that show. Right, it was a guest role, so yeah. Yes, yes. And uh, it's, yeah, it's almost played... like I got to stick my flag in Naruto and say I did work on the show. Not much, but I did work on it. Yeah, yeah. yeah just to uh, recall your memory a little bit, you played a character where he had um, he called Naruto and Shino, who was played by Derek Stephen Prince, to come in to step in because his dad passed away and he's supposed to get this inheritance but the thing is you're not supposed to laugh at a funeral not supposed to what laugh yeah. at a funeral because oh right right not supposed to laugh at a funeral <laughs> 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 and the thing is uh dorothy fawn plays your character's wife too really and mari devon played your sister oh my gosh yeah so it's like it's one of those deep-seated connections where mary know the people that she worked with before and you know call them up and saying yes yes he's very, the thing very is, great we, with that we work together so much we know what one another can do mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so when a character turns up they can call people and feel pretty confident that they can you know hit that character yeah because i i have to praise jeff bob michael richard when they do that for certain like actors from the previous generation because no matter how old you get you still got the acting game in you <laughs> yeah i know um it's still there it'll always be there and uh, we have fun doing it you know we amuse ourselves yeah always always i just i just wish that there was more like behind the scenes stuff going on like you know seeing you guys joking around behind the scenes when you're not performing when you're dubbed well, you know, we did have a social life together. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, and if this whole crazy thing, this pandemic thing didn't help that process. Yeah. So it took the starch out of it, but we would have get togethers. Steve Kramer would have an Oscar party, mm -hmm. you know, and a lot of us would be there. And then um, we had a party for, uh, Oh, we would have Christmas parties up at uh, up at Magnitude Eight, mm -hmm. you know, um, and where Kevin Seymour was, and so all of us would get together. So yeah. the, the thing is, is we all knew one another, you know. So it was this was this group of actors who enjoyed one another's company, and and just got along great. Yeah, speaking of, speaking of that, I saw I saw a picture of you with with various actors when y'all went out to see uh, Jeff Nimoy's new film, Famous. Yes. So I seen yes. you, Michael Sorich, Joe Ackman, uh, Lex Lane, Bo Belingsley, various various talent in the there. The West Side Pavilion, there, that restaurant on the first floor. We all went in there and had dinner. Yeah. And then took that picture. Yes. And fa famous was pretty good. That was not it, bad at all. It, it it really it really hits home in a reality sense and a in a more personal sense when it comes to these actors going to conventions because, you know you know the fans can get really crazy at conventions and then once once your time your time of the day is over you go to your hotel room and then 
you see fans at your hotel room are like, hey, hey, I want your autograph, I want your autograph. And when, yeah, that's yeah. nice to see. <clears throat> yeah. And Jeff Nimoy, <laughs> all people. <laughs> yeah, I got I, I, You know, if, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. I've enjoyed working with Jeff. Yeah. I have. He was a fun director. Yes, he, um, I actually engaged with him a couple of times on social media. He, he's a very generous guy. He always shared various stories with actors. I'd be throwing the actor's name. He said, yeah, I remember that actor. Always fun to work with. Anytime I book, have this actor I'm directing, I'm, I always, we always have a great time. Yeah, yeah. Jeff and Bob Buckholz were a pair for a while there. Yeah. And I worked a lot for Bob Buckholz. I dubbed a lot of different things. Yeah things on on netflix um that the heist i yeah. worked in that initially um but no one will ever know you know i did some other film not too long ago for that was on netflix uh yeah and yeah so <laughs> yeah it's that's like, the way it goes it's like one of those things like you said you actors are very close with one another you know what y'all capable of and if one of them turn out to be a director they, they can know, they know where to reach you like they can yeah be Kirk Thornton saying, hey, Bob, are you interested in this part you want to do? And then you, you might say, likely say, yeah, you know? Yep. But man, but with this, I hate to conclude your time, but I want to be very, very Complete. gentle. With I this. understand. <laughs> well, it's all right. There's no pressure for me. Yeah. <laughs> um, this is a comfortable chair. <laughs> yeah. I hope you have one too. Yeah, but thank you so much for sharing these stories, Bob. I'm very, very grateful. And it's been a very much privilege talking to you, Bob. Thank you so My much. My pleasure. <laughs> Best of luck to you in your pursuits. You too. You know, whatever yeah. they may be, wherever they may be. Thank you. Thank you. And yeah, I'm, all the okay. best to you, Stephen. Yeah. Where I'm, are you from, by the way? Where are you um, I'm originally from Chicago, but I'm currently residing in Philadelphia, PA. Ah, my father was born in Chicago. Wow. That's another, whatever that you know, whatever that means, but yeah, uh, yeah. no, it's fine because another um ac actress by the name of Melody Spivak, she's from originally. Melody, from yes, very nice gal. Very, yeah, very, very, very funny too. <laughs> yes, yes, yeah, she had a great part in Bit the Cupid. Yeah, with mm -hmm. this sort of wild thing, it was and, and damn funny because she's got <laughs> that voice and she sort of did a a, a mock kettle kind of. <laughs> kind of thing she yeah. was this crazy bird i think but anyway yeah, yeah. melody i've enjoyed her yeah I and was... yeah and michael mcconaughey michael mcconaughey he, yeah he's yeah. a he's a very talented actor too um everything he does he does so with very grace and style and no matter if it's goofy he'll get into the goofy if it's serious he definitely get into the character yes yes very very an astute actor he definitely is definitely is and uh, yes oh, i'm just that, thinking back my yeah mm. yeah i'm thinking back too because like it's it's so many actors i want to name but you know it's it's a lot it's a lot of talented people out there and a lot of new talent come into the woodworks when it comes yes to yes there's a whole influx a whole texas contingent yeah <laughs> you know well yeah, I understand. <laughs> More power to him. But I, hopefully, Bob, if you feel like acting, if somebody is a producer or director call you up and you feel like acting, I'll be looking forward to hearing your voice in any kind of animation, commercial, video games. Even if I, if I see you on screen doing like on camera work, like you like that show you did called Coach from a long. Oh yes, yes. Hopefully, I'll hear you or see you again on my screen. Indefinitely. So you from your mouth. <laughs> and thank you for making me laugh. I I ain't laughed like this in a long time. And well, all right. <laughs> Bonus. Thank you. Thank you so much. Anyway, all the best to you, my friend. You too. Take care now. Take it easy. You bye too. bye. Bye.